Absolutely. welcome to the weekend uh, podcast this is uh, your host as always man like it all. the moment of truth the moment you all have been waiting for my guest live and direct in the building uh, good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon very good to be here the pleasure is uh, the pleasure is mine and thank you for making the time and uh, for anyone who don't know who doesn't uh, you know know what to do could you give us a feel because somebody could be listening and is wondering who is this you know a gentleman with a powerful voice I don't know who this person is could you explain what is it to do and um, how you found your experience today at blue radio no absolutely would like to do that yes my name is Jacques <coughs> Jacques Bout is my name mm-hmm. I'm from the Netherlands um, and I'm and I work for Deloitte uh, mm-hmm. Deloitte is an, is an advisory firm mm-hmm. but more interesting I guess is what we do is we work a lot with the United Nations um, and as you all know the sustainable development goals 17 goals 169 targets mm-hmm. and we're way behind uh, the world needs more more acceleration uh, of the of the sustainable development goals and what we try to do in a very small and humble way is to is to help and support private sector organization in advancing those SDGs. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm doing as an as an advisory. Mm-hmm. All right, that's interesting. Actually, I've been um, I'm interested in studying risk and uh, risk uh, management. Uh, I understand at Deloitte you offer some of these services. What advice would you have for someone like me or uh, any young person you know interested in that particular field? Well, that's a very interesting question. So it's a, it, it will be a job application immediately, right? A job interview. No, no, you are you're you're very well good informed. So so risk management or, or governance, corporate governance, risk management mm-hmm. is is a is a very important part of what what organizations do, not just private sector but also also public sector organizations. Mm-hmm. And the the area of risk management is is something that I studied and, and I. I worked on for for many many years in my in my life at uh, at, at Deloitte. Um, so working for the for the advisory firm is um, is something I would like to advise and like to recommend also for young people to be. I I always liked it. Why? Because it gives you it gives you access to a lot of different organizations yeah, as an as an as an advisor. One, uh, two. What it has given me a lot is is, is travel the world, uh, is is moving to a lot of lot of different countries, meeting a lot of different people, mm-hmm. and 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 see how different cultures work yeah, within organizations. So, yeah. So risk management is an is an interesting. It's still a, a niche uh, type type of. Um, uh, a type of, of, of opportunity, but uh, but I really would like mm-hmm. recommend it to uh, to young people to do it. All right, interesting. Uh, many a uh, many a times, young people are very are very have this mentality. You know, I want to get rich quick. Uh, as you talked earlier, you mentioned you know you've been working for more than thirty years, so it is very clear that you know uh, things take time. Uh, as a young person and a young people listening into the podcast, um, how should we, you know, develop that uh, that bone, you know, of being patient, of uh, working the or rather trusting the process? Yeah, well, I I don't know exactly what what I did <laughs> and, and my career and how I progressed in, in in my career also in the advisory business is 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 a good example it's it definitely is is changing i think a bit hey, young the young generation younger people would like to experience uh, different differences hey, different experience so i see younger generation uh, moving away more to from organization to another organization experience something over here a couple of years later experience something else which i think i i i, I really really like hey? so so that is absolutely not not a bad thing i didn't do it i i, I started with deloitte as an intern <laughs> I'm, I'm still with deloitte 33 years later but but i think what what i did is is ex- is get that experience of of seeing different organizations by the clients we we serve mm-hmm. all right interesting um as uh, we wind up what final message would you like to leave you know uh, the listener with uh, a message that could change their lives could impact how the you know they approach their work and uh, how they do things yeah. yeah well i'm first of all very grateful to be here eh, to be in kenya I was in Nairobi the last couple of days, and now here in Mombasa. Mm-hmm. Uh, first time for me to, uh, to to be here, which 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 I really like. And and I think what what you have to value a lot is um, is is the things that you can change and the difference that you can make here in your own community. 
in, in Mombasa, in your own community. I focus uh, a lot on the, um, you know, as I said, on the UN, on the, on, the, on the sustainable development goals, the global challenges yeah, that, that are there. Mm -hmm. But for me, global challenges are, are only coming to, going to become better if local solutions are implemented. So that's the reason I'm also here had to experience local solutions to the global challenges that we that we all have. And, and being here in the in the studio is an is an is a, is a, is a magnificent example of, of a local solution had to address uh, the problems that we have on, on the ocean life in the ocean as you as you explained had to, yeah. to be here and implement a local solution where it most matters. Mm -hmm. All right, Rai, thank you very much. Uh, we are grateful for your time and we hope uh, that you take Blue Radio to whatever you, wherever and whenever you travel. I will do. All I will right. do that immediately. Thank you so much. All right, all right. Also, like uh, to switch gears uh, to two of uh, his colleagues, they have been listening patiently and I believe they have gathered uh, some of the tips, or rather, I would say in Kenya we call it Mwa Kenya. It's sort of, um, I'd listen to what my friend says so that uh, when I get to be asked questions, I can always refer to, you know, whatever they said. But uh, shock on to you. I uh, usually prepare myself with a lot of questions. Uh, I've done this for a very long time, yeah? So um, <clears throat> I'll start with the gentleman to my father's right. He is a specialist when it comes uh, to young people. He works with Red Cross. And without much further ado, Jumbo. Jambo, thank you for having me. All right, the pleasure is mine. Uh, kindly, for anyone you know who doesn't know what Red Cross does, could you give us a little break, breakdown you know, of what that is? Yes, Red Cross and Red Crescent is the largest humanitarian organization around the world. You might know it here in Kenya as Kenya Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And what we provide is emergency relief in times of crisis. That mm -hmm. could be a personal crisis, something that you experience yourself, or something much larger like the recent floods here in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, many times as young people, we, we shy away from, you know, volunteering. You know, when somebody asks you, could you volunteer, you know, your time, your effort and your resources towards a particular cause, we are, we have, we, we, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't have that willingness. How do you convince, you know, these young individuals, you know, to come forward and be part of Red Cross? That's a very good question and a constant struggle. Um, I also work uh, back in the days, I was a volunteer in my own community in the city of Rotterdam. And I always explained to my friends that I had to convince my volunteer colleagues on Friday night not to go to the bar, <laughs> but to volunteer with Red Cross. And that is a tricky thing, I can assure you. <laughs> um, but I think also for myself, I only started the power of volunteering once I started to volunteer, uh, because <laughs> it really opened up the world for me. Uh, the community in which the city in which I live mm -hmm. and to see the impact firsthand. And I think seeing that impact, wherever that may be in your community, I think that will give you the drive mm -hmm. and the yeah. inspiration to, to become a volunteer uh, more regularly. All right. Community is usually at the heart, you know, of every activity, be it business, you know, be it lifestyle, everything revolves around uh, community. How is it important, you know, to develop, you know, these communities, uh, not only for the good times, but also for the bad times? Yeah, perhaps for the bad times, <laughs> indeed, I must say. It is, a strong community is so important. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a community can be everything. Huh? It can be with your friends, it can be with your family, it can be in the neighborhood, for instance. But in times of disaster, in times of crisis, you always rely first on your own community. Huh? Yeah. The ambulance will take time. In times of a flood, there will not be uh, government service immediately. So mm -hmm. it will always be the people around you that will care for you first so mm -hmm. it's really important that we build up their capabilities so that they can support one another mm -hmm. um, in times of crisis when you cannot rely on supports from uh, from the higher hand so to say all right powerful finally as we wind up how can someone you know be part of the red cross community where can they find uh, you know is it a place i can uh, volunteer online should i come physically to the office could you walk us through that process yeah, the nice thing about the Red Cross and Red Crescent is that we offer a lot of choices. Huh? Mm -hmm. I think the, the Red Cross and Red Crescent offer so many services to the community is that whatever your talent is or whatever your interest is, there's al always something that you can give to the organization, mm -hmm. whether it is media service, whether it is something more hands-on in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kenya Red Cross is always looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, you can always find them on their website, but you can also go to the ranch here in Mombasa or in Nairobi or anywhere uh, around the country. 
because they would always welcome volunteers and they <laughs> will look at what are your skills, what are your interests, what is your ambition, and then we will find you uh, a good way to give back to the community. All right. As uh, and my final question. Working as a volunteer, there are uh, so much communities you know you've interacted with, many young people, many lives you've touched. What is that one unique experience you know that you encountered and uh, it made you believe in the cause and in the work that you do? So it's it's about that impact that you mentioned. Huh? Seeing that impact firsthand is what you uh, what motivates you to to continue to give back. Mm -hmm. I think you. What inspired me most was perhaps that first project I did with uh, the Netherlands Red Cross in my hometown of Rotterdam, mm -hmm. which inspired me to be here with this organization 15 years later still mm -hmm. around. Uh, and it was around, um, let's say we have a, a Dutch tradition, let's say like Christmas, so to say, in terms of uh, giving uh, presents. Uh, but whereas many people like myself consider getting presents as a given, that is not the case for everyone. Mm -hmm. huh? But how do you explain to young people that Santa, for instance, gives presents to everyone except for you? Huh? Um, because your your parents might not be so well off. Yeah. So what we did with Red Cross is we, uh, we collected from the local community a lot of uh, presents, so to say. Mm -hmm. And then we gave that to, to families that were in a less fortunate situation. Yeah. Um, but not from Red Cross, but that uh, the children would also receive something from from Santa, mm -hmm. and that they could brag about it with their with their with their uh, with their sisters, for instance, but also in the classroom, so that for once they would not be that that kid that didn't get anything from Santa mm -hmm. simply because their parents were not able to. All right, thank you very much. That's very powerful. And to the only lady in uh, the building, uh, for for the gents who are wondering if she's single, well, <laughs> she isn't. You can. Uh, <laughs> can call me <laughs> <laughs> but they don't know what to call you <laughs> well, <laughs> like us to start off uh, with a name because how can i call you know uh, my name is zoe mm -hmm, all right and uh zoe how 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 are you finding your experience in mombasa oh i love mombasa so i flew into nairobi last friday so i've been there for the last ooh, week so, mm -hmm. uh, so, and then now Mombasa since yesterday, and I All love right. it. It actually reminds me of home a little bit because uh -huh. I'm Australian. So, uh -huh. with the nice coastline, the relaxed lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, I love it. So, I want to move here. So, that's why I need a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Actually, um, you know, um, people from my tribe, that is the Kalenjin, many of them are in Australia. So actually, even here in the office, they keep, uh, you know, keep telling me, uh, you, we know one day you'll be in Australia. Yes, you have to. I'm a bit biased because mm -hmm. I come from there, but I think mm -hmm. it's the best country in the world. There's so much diversity, mm -hmm. there's green, there's beaches, there's the city life. Um, so mm -hmm. I definitely recommend it. All right. And uh, for anyone who is, in, uh, is curious, like myself here, uh, over over time traveling the world, how how are you finding you know uh, that experience you know in terms of work in terms of you know creating networks cultures and this sort of thing. It's a good question. So I was in Australia my whole life, and then three years ago I decided to move to the Netherlands with work, to work with these two gentlemen next to me, and it's because Australia can be close up to four, 24 hours away from anywhere in the world. So I yeah. wanted to get more connected to the world. I wanted to understand a little bit more about different cultures, history. Um, so I decided yeah. to move, and then through my job, I'm very fortunate to have been travelled to travel to a lot of places, uh, but it's places like in Africa or. Um, you know where you see the real heart of where the issues are but also where there's that real motivation for people to make a change and make a difference mm -hmm. and i think that's where kind of my heart sings in terms of these locally led solutions and mm -hmm. so seeing that has been a wonderful experience for me all right many uh, actually this week we were talking to an organization who you know advocates for women rights and the importance you know of education in uh, in uh, family planning i believe for young women as a woman yourself, you know, traveling the world, meeting, you know, women, meeting girls who are experiencing different kinds of challenges. How would you say, or rather, what kind of solutions do you think are required from a woman's perspective? Good question. I think traveling the world, I've realized how privileged 
I was growing up compared to other women. So I come from a very different experience, but that's why traveling to places um, where you see that the equality is, it's not equal. There is severe sure. inequality. And I think it's about empowering each other. And also I think it's doing what you're doing here is talking about it, <laughs> um, talking about it on a platform that can reach so many people and bringing light to it. <laughs> and I think that's why I, you know, congratulations to all of you with what you do here. You contribute to part of that. <laughs> um, so I think it's more talking about it. I think it's empowering each other. Um, and I think it's putting it on the global agenda, which I think we see more and more through our work with the United Nations mm -hmm. um, today than ever before. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. As uh, we wind up, one, what message would you have for, you know, uh, young girls listening in? There's a podcast I enjoy on BBC. It's called uh, Dear Daughter, mm -hmm. where they compile like messages, you know, from all the women in the world and they share these messages, you know, with the uh, young women in the world. What would be your one message to the I women? I think it would be honestly quite simple and I think it's believe in yourself. I think mm -hmm. it's have confidence in your ability, have confidence in your ambition. Um, yeah, it's a hard world out there at times, but if you believe in yourself, I think, yeah, you'll definitely make through it, through it. all right all right thank you very much for making the time and uh i've taken uh, 15 minutes of your time but i believe it has been uh worth the while. and for anyone listening in to the podcast remember uh www.blueradio.co.ke is where you find uh, the best podcasts till uh, next time it has been your host ian keep talk you're listening to blue radio bringing the vibe